Hi, boys and girls. Happy Monday. I'm making this video to continue reading to you our book, Junie B. Jones, Toothless Wonder. We are on chapter five. So if you have not read chapters one, two, three, and four, go back to the old videos and listen to those first. And then you'll be all caught up with us. So today I'm going to read chapters five and six. Um, if you listened, you would know that in our last, um, in the last chapter, Junie B finally lost her tooth and she's all worried because she's not sure how she looks. Um, her grandfather keeps telling her that she looks so cute and she's like, no, I don't look cute. So, um, chapter five is called the fairy. And I think that they're talking about the tooth fairy. So let's see what happens in the next chapter of our book. Um, as you're reading or listening, don't forget that you should be visualizing and putting those pictures in your mind while we read because there's not too many pictures in this chapter book. So you need to use your imagination and think about what do the characters look like? What do the settings look like? Um, and then just think about what do you think about the book? What do you think is going to happen next? Is it funny? Is it silly? Is it um, confusing? What, what are you thinking about or wondering as you're, as you're listening to me read the book? All right, chapter five, The Fairy. That night we had festivities. Festivities is when my grandpa and grandma come over and all of us eat cake. Grandma Helen Miller made the cake herself. She put a big smiley face on the top. Only that is not all, because the smiley face had a tooth missing, just like me. I laughed and laughed at that silly thing. Then I reached in my pocket and I got my tooth and I passed it all around the table. Oh, that's a beaut, Junie B, said Grandma Miller. I know it, Grandma. I know it's a beaut, I said real proud. I can't wait to take it to school for show and tell. The children are going to love this thing. Daddy looked strange at me. Oh, gee, um, I don't know, honey, he said. I'm not really sure you should take your tooth to school. Mother shook her head. No, Junie B, that's definitely not a good idea, she said. And besides, you won't even have your tooth on Monday, remember? You have to leave it for the tooth fairy tonight. Just then, my skin got chill bumps again, and the flutterflies came back in my stomach. Cause I know stuff about the fairy, that's why. My voice felt kind of shaky. Yeah, only what if I don't want to leave my tooth for the fairy mother, I said. What if I just want to take it to show and tell and that's all? Mother shook her head again. No, Junie B, no show and tell, she said. Taking a tooth to show and tell is just, well, it's just disgusting, said Daddy. Yes, Mother, or yes, said Mother, disgusting. I whined at those two. No, it isn't, I said. Lots of kids bring teeth to school. Because one time, Roger brought a shark's tooth, and he even let me and Herb put it right in our mouths. And then we looked like sharks too. I thought some more. Plus, another time, Shirley brought her grandmother's dentures and a lot of us put those in our mouths too. Grandma Miller did a little gag, only I didn't actually know why. My grandpa patted her hand. Just be glad she doesn't want to take the spit cup. He whispered. Just then, my whole face lighted up. Cause I have ears like a hawk, of course. The spit cup.
cup, the spit cup. I will take the spit cup, I hollered. I jumped down from my chair and I zoomed to the bathroom. Then I got the spit cup out of the trash and I dusted it off real good. Good news, people, I shouted real loud. There's still some blood around the edges. I quickly ran back to show them. Grandma Miller closed her eyes at that sight. Then mother put her head on the table and hid her face in her arms. The festivities were over, I believe. After grandma and grandpa Miller left, mother took me into the bathroom and we brushed my teeth real careful. Then I took my loose tooth out of my pocket and I brushed that guy too. I held it up to the light. Look, I said, look how shiny I made it. I really wish I could take this tooth to school, mother. I really, really wish that with all my might. Mother gave me a hug. I know you do, Junie B, she said, but it's still going to be fun to put it under your pillow tonight, isn't it? She smiled. I remember when I was a little girl, I couldn't wait to wake up in the morning and find out how much money the tooth fairy had left me. My skin got prickly at that name again. Also, sweat came on my head. I thought and thought about what to do. Then finally, I stood on my tiptoes and I whispered in mother's ear. Yeah, only I know stuff about the fairy mother, I said. I know the truth. The truth, she said. You know the truth? Yes, I whispered again. I know the exact truth, mother, because last year, Polly Allen Puffer told me the whole entire story. I took another big breath. Then I cupped my hands around her ear. Then I talked even quieter. The fairy isn't real, I said. The tooth fairy is just pretend. Mother's eyes got big and wide at me. No, she said. Yes, I whispered back. Polly Allen Puffer learned it from his big brother. The tooth fairy isn't real at all. She's actually a teensy little tooth witch. Mother's mouth came all the way open. A tooth witch? Shh, I said. We have to talk real soft, Mother. If the tooth witch hears anyone telling her secret, she flies into their room at night and she pinches their cheeks. Mother covered her face with her hands. She was in shock, I believe. Polly Allen's brother even saw the tooth witch, I said. Cause one night he put a tooth under his pillow and then he stayed awake all night. And he saw the tooth witch fly into his room on a teensy little toothbrush. Oh my, said mother. I know it is oh my, I said. And that is not even the worstest part. There's Junie B whispering to her mother. Cause the witch walked right under his pillow and she carried out his tooth and then she chomped a big bite out of it. Just like it was a little tooth apple. Mother made a noise behind her hands. I patted her very nice. I know how you feel, I said. This is very hard to hear. Finally, mother took her hands away. But it doesn't really make sense, Junie B, she said. I mean, why would a little witch leave money under a pillow? A witch would never do something nice like that, would she? I rolled my eyes way up to the ceiling. Cause sometimes I have to explain everything to her. Of course she would, mother, 
Don't you get it? The witch leaves money so the children think she's really a fairy. Because if the children don't think there's a fairy, they won't leave their teeth, right? And if they don't leave their teeth, the witch won't get any tooth apples. Mother closed her eyes very tight. Then all of a sudden, she opened the bathroom door and she ran right out of the room. She was taking this harder than I thought. All right, not a picture, but this is chapter six, full of soup. That night, Daddy tucked me into bed. He said that Polly Allen Puffer's brother is full of soup. There's no such thing as a tooth witch, Junie B, he said. I promise you there isn't. Polly Allen Puffer's brother just made that up to scare Polly Ann, Polly Allen. Just then, oh, and then Polly Allen said it to scare you too. I shook my head. No, Daddy, no. It's not made up, I know it isn't. Because the tooth witch makes sense, that's why, I said. She makes sense way more than a fairy. Daddy raised his eyebrows. Why, he asked, why does a witch make more sense than a fairy? Because, I said, because the tooth witch likes to chomp the teeth, but the tooth fairy doesn't do anything with the teeth right? So why would she even pay money for them? Daddy did a little frown. Well, I don't know exactly, he said, but I'm sure that she must do something with the teeth, Junie B. There are other things to do with teeth besides just chomping them, you know? Like what? I asked. Daddy put his head in his hands. Then he thought and thought and thought. After he got done thinking, he went to get mother. She came into my room carrying fussy Ollie. She handed him to daddy and sat down on my bed. Daddy said, you have another problem about the tooth fairy. She said, I nodded. Yes, I said, cause if there's really a fairy, then she has to have a reason to want all these teeth, right, mother? She wouldn't just sh throw them in the garbage because that doesn't make any sense. Plus, also, it would hurt my feelings. Mother hugged me. No, Junie B, of course she doesn't throw them in the garbage, she said. I'm sure, he, I'm sure the fairy does something very special with the teeth. Like what, I said. Mother ran her tired fingers through her. There's her family on the bed talking to Junie B. Mother ran her tired fingers through her hair. She stood up and walked back and forth on my rug. Then all of a sudden her face got brighter. I know. I bet the fairy uses the teeth to make jewelry, she said. At first, Daddy and I didn't say any words. We just stared and stared at her. Jewelry, I finally said. Mother smiled. Yes, of course, she said. She probably uses the teeth to make little tooth necklaces and bracelets and cute little, tooth, little toe rings. How does that sound? I made a sick face. It sounds repulsive, said Daddy. Mother stopped smiling. She quickly took Ollie back from Daddy and she hurried out of my room. After she left, Daddy finished tucking me into bed. I'm sorry about that, Junie B, he said. I'm afraid Ollie has your mother worn to frazzle these days. I'm sure she's not right about that jewelry thing. He did a little shiver. No. Certainly she's not, he said. Then, before I could ask any more questions about the fairy, he kissed me goodnight, and then he rushed out of my room as fast as mother. That night, I did not put the tooth under my pillow. Also, I did not put it under there the night after that, or the night after that, because what do you know, 
The fairy still did not make sense. All right, my friends, we are on chapter seven. So we're gonna stop right there. So, hmm, what do we think about the tooth fairy? I wonder if you all have ever had the tooth fairy come to your house and what happened? Did you leave your tooth under your pillow? And was it gone the next day? Did you get any money for your tooth when you left it under your pillow? And did the tooth fairy leave anything for you? So I bet we could use all these clues and put them together and try to figure out if Junie B is really right about the tooth fairy. Should she keep her tooth or should she leave it for the tooth fairy to take? All right, next time we will read chapter seven and chapter eight. I'll see you guys soon, miss you, bye.